Alright, so hello and welcome back to another episode of the Final Fantasy VI Blindfolded LLG. So I've pretty much got everybody just loaded out defensively here. They uh, don't need anything offensive for this segment considering there's uh, only random encounters. My hope is that the I don't lose my banish status, which you probably noticed that I had in the first room or two, because in this cave, pretty much after the first two rooms, it's pretty much just the same set of enemies the entire time, and uh, pretty they pretty much never use attacks that will remove vanish, so I can pretty much just waltz on through if I have the vanish status. That'll hold true for one of the dungeons on Thames Island too, I guess. And uh, somewhat true for the floating continent, but I'll still have problems there anyway, thanks to those avoidable, unavoidable ninja encounters. All right, through the first bit. All right, so here's where things get annoying. Because I can't control if I lose my vanish status or not in any way, really. And reapplying it would be annoying, kind of. Not really that annoying, but I don't have Phantom on Gao right now, so... And Terra doesn't have any MP because she was the one who casted it before. Take one step back. Take one step back. Yay, useless treasure. Might as well get it, though. Thankfully, the encounter rate, I don't think it's super high in here, so... No fire, no fire. Yay, people escaping. Alright, there's an identical notch on both sides of this room, which makes it a little bit easier to remember, because just gotta remember it's two steps out both ways. Probably there, not hitting any more battles. One, two. Oh, whoops. Was I just supposed to go straight down to that chest? Yeah. One, two, three. Two people are escaped. That was good grammar. Okay, good. No damage. Things slack off a bit when I get to the next room. Although this room clearly has problems of its own that aren't related at all to being burnt by... Okay, yes, they definitely are related to being burnt by fire. <laughs> but not in the same way. Alright, so I should be in this room now. One step right, one step up. Alright, so now I'm lined up. As you notice, uh, th nothing's moving yet, and that's because I'm not in the right spot for it to move, but if I take one step to the right, I will be. One, two, three, two, one, two, all the way to the right left. Keep going. Chest. Alright. I just let myself get roasted on the way back. One, two, three. That's an okay spot for the battle. It doesn't mess up my timing or anything. I don't recall exactly what's in this room. Alright. So I walked back out to reset everything. That makes it just a little bit easier. One. Why did I count? Alright, so now I can just waltz straight across here. It may look like I can't make that, but I can, because you can walk a step while it's transitioning, so it's handy to use. Up and left into this little slot here. 
the only the left side is changing right now, so I don't have to remember what's actually going on. All the way down. Should hear a pause in the changing. Yep, there we go. One, two. That's easier than uh, going all the way across because it's hard to judge the distance going all the way across and you have to be pretty precise there. But if I go uh, that way, it requires very little precision. Alright. Alright, so now I'm out of here. So now this is where things should get a little bit more relaxing as long as I don't mess it up. One step down, all the way to the right. This part may look tricky to remember, but it's pretty much just two down rights, three down lefts, and then you just reverse going the way back up. It's really easy. If it's some bones, I'm pretty sure there's nothing they can do to touch me. If it's Ings, they have Life Shaver, but I'm not sure if they can use it on their first turn or, uh,. If it's a counterattack, because I never saw it in any of my test runs, and I can't remember what triggers it, so hopefully it's not even possible for me to get hit with it. That is the best case scenario, obviously. I've picked all characters that can run reasonably fast, and not Cyan, even though he's level 7 and can take an extra hit or something. I uh, Not even really, but... There's simply no advantage to taking him when he gets away so slowly. Left. Down. Left. Down. There we go. Ether. It's not quite free, I guess, but... Still kind of handy, and it's one right and up. And again, it's not that hard to remember, and the battles can't do anything really. I'm going up on the second right and up. And I'm pretty sure I could even mess up and do it everything an extra time and it wouldn't matter. Up. This one should be slightly longer. Left. Up. Got one more left and up to do after that. Eh, side attack. Not as though I needed it, but. Still works pretty nicely. I gotta wonder how the party even gets on the side attacks anyway, <laughs> if they're all in the same spot to begin with, and then. Alright. Technically, no reason to go up at the end of this one, but... Uh, one, two, but I did it anyway, because... Reasons. Down the staircase, and now... The dungeon's kind of relaxing, to be honest, after the Magitek facility. There's nothing to worry about, because the enemies can't really hurt me. Just gotta follow the mental instructions here, and... All the way right into this little cave. Oh no, I can't see what's gonna go. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna die now. Don't know where I am. One, two, three. It seems kind of weird that I can walk through the cave like that, holding right and then three up, but whatever. Down. There's a little staircase here, just to add some variety, I guess. 
it's like the one cave staircase in the game, but one back up onto the staircase. I haven't gotten any battles in a while, this is starting to worry me a little. I get the battle just before <laughs> I get to see whether I've done it properly or not, thanks to the switch being there. There we go. Might as well menu trick here to be extra careful. All the way down. out of the notch there. In this cave it looks like there's a lot of good spots to do like left and ups and right and ups and stuff like that but there's a lot of little slots that I end up running into and those almost always seem to cause problems that aren't worth it so generally I'm just walking in straight lines here but there are a couple spots coming up where I can make use of my walking a little bit differently. Alright. Almost at the bridge. Easy chest. Here in particular, I can go down right for quite a while. No real issues with it. just this long flat wall here which is unusual for this dungeon but it happens to be where the little cave is and I guess I didn't want to make it too complicated to get through when you couldn't see with the low encounter rate in this dungeon I can't really use it as much of a meter stick to tell if I've made it to the end or not. Should probably have made it to the end by now, I'm thinking. Going right this time. Gotta wonder, if I hold parties invisible, what are the enemies even attacking anyway? And why can't something like dogs that can like smell where I am attack me? Well, unless if physical attacks actually go through invisible characters, that could make sense. If the invisibility isn't just a sight thing, it's actually uh... You're literally incorporeal. Alright, get stuck in there, but I can go around. I might work out a better strap for there in Brave New World if and running all the way up here because it looks like I could probably save some steps but here it doesn't really matter because I'm not gonna be over leveling myself for I suppose a whole extra half a battle isn't gonna be over leveling myself but down left I hit the doorway here don't want to hit the first switch because that's a ninja and he'll kill me. Or give me EXP, but probably the first one. Alright. Not that the battles were all that tricky anyway, but they're gone now. There we go. Nice and easy segment. Only 15 minutes long. It's pretty reasonable. See you next time.